Welcome to Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz, a candid conversation as we learn about dementia, Alzheimer's, and its effects on the people we love. Jill's years of dedication and experience help you adapt, recover, overcome obstacles, and help find a positive outcome. It's time for Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. Welcome, Caregiver Nation. I'm so glad to have everybody listening today. I have an exciting show. One of my favorite things in the world is when my friends with diagnosis of different types of dementia create beautiful art. And I have purchased a few pictures myself from the Memories in the Making program through the Alzheimer's Association. And today, my guests are Nancy Thompson and Lisa Steffen. Hi, ladies. Good morning. Hi there. How are you? Let's start with you, Nancy. Tell my listeners a little bit about yourself, what you do at the Alzheimer's Association here in Colorado. Well, thanks, Jill. Um, I'm the Director of Individual Giving and Donor Stewardship for the Association. And really what that means is I get the privilege of working one-on-one with our donors and um, helping to raise money for Alzheimer's. Oh, and that's wonderful. And you raise a lot of money throughout the year, not only with this program, but other programs that really sustain your resources there at the association, right? That's right. Because Mm -hmm. we do provide direct care and services for people living with Alzheimer's and their families. Um, The fundraising is really important to our mission and to the work that we do. Mm -hmm. And an additional piece of that, if you don't mind my adding, is the research dollars. Right. And some great information came out recently about some different research programs that the Alzheimer's Association is um, really promoting and supporting, not only here in Colorado, but throughout the world. Throughout the world. That's correct. That's outstanding. Yeah. Yes. Great. And Lisa, hi. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Good. You are Lisa Steffen. Tell my listeners about yourself. Yeah, I am the uh, Memories in the Making program coordinator. It's an art program for people with dementia, and um, I've been coordinating the program for about five years now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so tell us, what is the Memories in the Making program? What's it all about? Well, it's, um, it's an art program that was specifically designed for people with dementia, and it doesn't have to be someone with art in their background. They just have to be willing to... (laughs) <laughs> Sit down and have some fun. Try something fun and just give it a try. So nice. Um, some of the things that uh, that specifically distinguish memories in the making are uh, setting a tone that's warm and friendly and safe. You can't do anything wrong. Um, we use fine art materials, okay. which are safe, easy to see, easy to clean, archival. Um, no kid stuff. We don't discredit what they're doing by okay. giving them newsprint or crayons. Um, Each artist gets individual inspiration. They get to choose a picture or a three-dimensional object that they want to work from. And it's just a jumping off point. They're not supposed to copy it. It's just, you know, something to get them started. Great. So with that, they can just choose something out of their memory. They can look out the window and see the beautiful flowers, trees, those types of things. Well, they they can, but we find that people who, um, who don't have an art background are a little at, like, I myself would even not be confident about just creating a picture from my imagination. So it's a lot easier to look at something and use that as a guideline. Okay. So, but they choose what they want to look at, and there are some artists who, you know, choose to do something um, that they remember that they see. Okay. Yeah. And what types of uh, materials do they use? Do they do they use paint? Do they use pencils? What kind of what yeah, kind of, uh, ways do they create their art? Well, we um, we work bec- because we're um, interested in you know keeping everything safe and archival so that it'll last a long time um, and easy for them to work with, easy to clean up and everything. Um, most of our materials are water based. Okay. So um, watercolor paints, watercolor pencils, mm-hmm. watercolor markers, watercolor pastels, um, that kind of thing. Great, great. So. How is how does this benefit the people who are participating in, participating in the program? Well, a lot of the benefits of this program um, are the, the same benefits that are in common with other uh, music, dance, other arts um, activities that they might participate in. Mm-hmm. Some of the most important ones are that it improves self esteem. Um, you get a feeling of accomplishment of doing something of value on your own. Oh, of course. Um, 
also it can increase attention span and focus. Mm -hmm. Um, MIM groups tend to, um, tend to get really quiet. Everybody gets very focused and, um, and that's a nice thing. And sometimes groups go longer than they should because people just can't stop. Mm -hmm. Um, and an important one, um, specific to dementia can, uh, create isolation due to the fear of making mistakes and so this kind of a group setting reduces isolation gives Mm -hmm. an opportunity to socialize um and then one of my favorite benefits is that uh it can enhance quality of life through improved mood and that's one of those things where multiple studies show that even if the experience itself is quickly forgotten the positive emotions from it can linger for days. You know, that is a great point. Let's talk about that for a minute. So someone works on this art and they're creating something that is completely unique in their own. And then it just resonates, right? It's just, Nancy, talk, speak to that a little bit. Well, we hear lots of stories from people who have never painted before mm-hmm. and they sit down in a memories in the making group and suddenly they're painting and they start creating a picture of the farm they lived on as a little girl and it brings back some memory that's deep inside there that maybe they can't even verbalize anymore mm-hmm. and the happiness and the joy that that brings them as they're creating something um, special and beautiful And we do see, like Lisa says in those studies, we see people who um, are really uplifted just from spending that time. Maybe it's an hour on that Tuesday creating something really special, and it brings out a, a memory that maybe they haven't thought about in a long time. Right. And, you know, just in that same in that same um, lane, I purchased a picture from a little lady named Ruthie Mm -hmm. and it was a a birdhouse with a little bird on it. And it was simplistic, but it was beautiful and it really spoke to me. So, Lisa, these classes, the the art projects are held in care communities. Yeah, we um we. It, the, the program takes place in about 90 care communities statewide. Wow, okay. Yeah. And one or more groups take place weekly at each mm-hmm. site. So Okay. And how long are they? Um, usually an hour. Okay. Some, sometimes, you know, if, if um, a facilitator notices that their group is never finished after an hour, they'll, <laughs> they'll extend it. But, yeah. Well, let's talk about the people who um, facilitate this, these groups. How, who facilitates the MIM painting programs? And how do you bring them into the fold? How are they trained? Well, ideally, each MIM group is um, facilitated by two people, one of them being a care community staff person and the other being a volunteer who was brought in from the community. Mm -hmm. Um, The volunteers often come to us with an art background. Okay. And so they bring familiarity and comfort with art materials and creative ideas and then the staff know the artists, and they can identify who's appropriate to participate. Mm-hmm. Um, they have comfort with caregiving and the related needs that might come up. So, you know, that really makes an ideal team, those two people mm-hmm. facilitating. Okay. So I can imagine that if someone is sitting there and they're trying to paint a picture or they're struggling a little bit, having a trained um, art instructor really can help them find that peaceful place yeah and they um yeah and we we try to not focus so much on instructing per se but Mm -hmm. more uh developing coaching develop guiding offering ideas encouraging yeah um so we're not teaching them how to uh how to you know achieve perfect perspective in a landscape okay yeah, we're just encouraging them to keep painting and keep work adding more. And Fantastic. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I'm going to have Nancy explain all about the Memories in the Making art auction. Okay? Great. Hey, friends. I'm excited to tell you about Pine Grove Crossing Assisted Living and Memory Care in Parker, Colorado. They set the bar high for person-centered care. Locally owned... 
They focus on exceeding their residents' expectations while providing excellent dining, housekeeping, and transportation services. Their care team with licensed nurses are available 16 hours per day, seven days a week, to ensure clinical needs are addressed as soon as possible. Please call or visit them at pinegrovecrossing.com or at 303-996-8000 and see how care goes into everything they do. It's It's time time for for Dementia Dementia Resilience with with Jill Lorenz. All right, we're back, and my guests today are Nancy Thompson and Lisa Steffen from the Alzheimer's Association Colorado, and we're talking about your Memories in the Making art auction, a fabulous event every year. I really enjoy it, and the people that uh, participate in this program create beautiful artwork, and when they do that, it's showcased at your annual auction. And it's coming up soon, right, Nancy? That's right. The Memories in the Making Art Auction is Saturday, June 8th. Okay. And it's kind of a culmination of all the artwork that's created by people with Alzheimer's or some form of dementia who paint in our Memories in the Making program. Mm-hmm. And all of that art is gathered at the association at the end of each year. This um, past year, we brought in over 4,000 pieces of artwork. Oh, my goodness. Right. (laughs) And then we, as as a staff, some of us internally jury that artwork and get it down to about 1,000 pieces. And then we have a professional jury of local professional artists who come in, and they jury it down and choose the pieces that are then in the art auction. So this year, we have... 116 pieces of artwork that was created through the Memories in the Making program. And then we also have 49 local professional artists or Colorado professional artists who pick a piece of that Alzheimer's artwork and they paint something to pair with it. Okay. So that's also part of this auction. Okay. So all of that will be auctioned off on Saturday, June 9th. Okay. So let's revisit just a minute. Pairing, what does that mean? That means that the professional artist has chosen something that a person who's painted in the Memories in the Making program, they've chosen a piece to pair with. So they'll paint or create something that they feel kind of matches or goes together with that piece of Alzheimer's artwork. And then we auction those off together as a pair. And there's some really amazing pairings that we have this year. Okay, so does that mean that they're really trying to look and see what the person with Alzheimer's or different types of dementia tried to paint and uh, maybe interpret that? I or guess no? that's in some ways, yes. The other thing that happens with this program is that the facilitators who work with the artist each week in a Memories in the Making program, they journal, they, they listen to the artist as they're painting, and they will write on the back of that piece what the artist was thinking, what Excellent. they were saying, what the memory came out as they were painting, what that was all about. Right. And our professional artists will look at all that journaling, read all those stories, and find a piece that kind of speaks to them or that they love the story, mm-hmm. and and then they will create something that, yeah, kind of their interpretation of what that piece looks like. That's my favorite part of this program, because I love going down memory lane with these folks and what they were thinking at the time. What were they feeling at the time when they created that particular piece of art? And it could be abstract, right, Lisa? Yeah, we see a lot of abstract art. Besides. Right. So... Let's talk about some of the meaningful stories. That's what this program is really all about. It's more about the process than the end result, mm-hmm. except for, of course, selling the pieces. Yeah. Of- it's a big <laughs> fundraiser for us, but the yes. special stories are lo- along the way are what really make this program what it is. And I can think of a couple from this year. We have an artist who's painted in the Memories in the Making program for a few years. She was living with Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, she passed away in February. And she, prior to her death, her a piece was selected to be in the auction this year. Okay. And her husband has been in touch with me, and he's planning to attend the auction. He said to me, I just have to tell you that 
the Memories in the Making program was really the only thing that gave her joy this last year or two. Oh, nice. I mean, just really lovely stories like that we hear all the time. Mm -hmm. We have a local professional artist, a young man who's pretty well known in our community, Eric Matelski. He does some beautiful Denver landscapes. He's painted with us now for three or four years as he picks a piece to pair with. This year he came in and he picked two pieces. Both his grandfather and his mother died from Alzheimer's. Mm, And so he's really committed to being a part of this auction. And one of the pieces he picked was a a train that someone, um, an artist with Alzheimer's painted. And he wanted to pair with that because he had a picture that his grandfather took of the 1933 State Fair. Oh, and it's wow. a train station and all these people. And that's the the picture that he painted for us was his interpretation of that photograph that will then pair with the train that the Alzheimer's artist painted. So we find so many special stories like that. We have many professional artists who have Alzheimer's in their family, and that's why they donate and contribute to this art auction. It's pretty special. Mm, That's what makes it so beautiful. Lisa, how about you? Some good memories, uh, some great things um, that you could talk about, uh, ideas that maybe someone put forth about why they painted a certain picture? Well, what rings out to you? I guess I'm thinking of one that um, I I like the uh, the commentary and stories that get recorded that end up really resonating with the families. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's one in the art auction this year, uh, a painting that was, um, uh, oh, I forget the exact title, but it's something about Hawaii. And it's uh, um, the reflections by the artist on the back of the painting included something about um, oh, to go back in time. (laughs) <laughs> and when her daughter saw that painting and oh. what it was that it was titled um, uh, relating to Hawaii, she said, we went on a family trip to Hawaii like when I was young. And so, you know, this was a memory that went way back. And, um, you know, and she said, that's definitely what she's tapping into there. And uh, it was really meaningful for her. Oh, I love that. We see a lot of families, too, who will say to us, I didn't even know she was painting. Right. And I had no idea that she could do something like this. It's really, really cool to see the family's reaction. Well, I think it's meaningful to families on numerous levels, but really it just is an event that touches the heart. I mean, it really does. I'm, when my mom was ill with uh, memory loss, and she had hippocampal sclerosis, I thought for 23 years she had Alzheimer's, but she didn't. She had a, a disease that mimicked it. And, um, you know, I would have given anything to have her come back to me, you know, at a certain point at the late stages of the diseases. And I would have loved to have, have had her participate in this program because I see this over and over. It's it's a beautiful event, but it's also sort of emotional for families when they come and, and grandchildren and, and uh, family members come and say, I didn't know grandma or grandpa could do this. Or even the people with younger Alzheimer's who create something in and their their siblings look at it and say, I remember this. I see where I see what what he or she was thinking. I can I can feel that, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty really special. It's really special. So, I want to talk a little bit um about how you choose specific pieces of art from different levels of dementia. And we're going to take a break. And when we come back, let's think about that. Do you take pictures that are sort of just little swipes on the canvas or um do they have to be extra special um, landscapes or things like that. We'll take a break. We'll be right back and have that discussion. Living and working with Alzheimer's and other dementias can often be challenging. Summit Resilience Training provides education, utilizing non-medical approaches for those who work with our friends affected by dementia. 
believing families still need one-on-one assistance, we provide classes which help them understand the diseases affecting their loved ones, offering strategies and techniques for success with activities of daily living and working with confusing behaviors. We offer in-home assessments to clarify symptoms of dementia diseases and help families work together to find moments of joy while living with memory loss and impairment. Education programs instilling person-centered care philosophies are offered for professional caregivers working in communities and homes, which can be customized for their staff. Training is also available for first responders, such as law enforcement, fire, and EMT personnel. We are passionate that people with dementias, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and others, are approached with compassion and understanding, and those who work with them have all the tools they need for success. Call us at Summit Resilience Training, 303-420-6988 to schedule a class or in-home assessment. Visit our website at summitresiliencetraining.com for more information. It's time for Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. Okay, I'm back, Caregiver Nation, and I've got Nancy Thompson and Lisa Steffen from the Colorado Alzheimer's Association with me today. And we've been talking about one of the most beautiful events I have ever witnessed. And one of my favorite things, Nancy, was always coming into the room, and Lisa, when you brought the art in and the staff at the Alzheimer's Association could come in and look at the pictures. And we were jockeying to see which ones we wanted to purchase. And they're beautiful, beautiful artwork, right? And that still happens at the association. (laughs) It still does. So uh, I want both of your opinions on this. Um, How do you choose... Uh, uh, between the painting, say, for example, my mom wasn't an artist and she might just put a few swipes of color on the canvas of, of different colors of paint. And then there are people who paint pictures you can easily identify and are quite good. I mean, that could rival uh, uh, anyone that is presenting in an art gallery. So how do you choose what paintings Make it into the art auction. I, I know you said you, you choose from 4,000, but let's break it down a little bit so my listeners can understand. Is there all levels of yes. expertise in this? Yes. So one of the things we look for is that the art represents different stages of the disease. I love that. So we'll have people who are early onset all the way to people who are in their 90s and have been living with Alzheimer's or dementia for quite some time. Okay. We also try to represent all the care communities who are involved. So there really is a strategy to what we do in picking wow. the art. Right. And we bring in the professional artists who jury it. They work in different genres as well. So we don't just have landscape artists okay. choosing. We try to mix that up a little bit. And our jury is amazing, and they love this program, and they're really careful about, like I said, looking at stages of the disease and then looking at different types of art. So we have abstracts and landscapes and buildings and still life and Animals. Yeah, lots of animals. <laughs> Everyone loves the animals. And we do have people in the, who are represented, Memories in the Making artists, who have never painted before. Mm-hmm. But we also have a couple who actually were professional artists. And they there's one artist who's been with us for many years now, and she's still painting just beautiful works of art. Isn't that amazing? And maybe doesn't even remember that she was a professional artist at one point. So we we run the gamut of um, different types of art and really looking at representing the disease in different stages. That's the best part of this program, in my opinion. The 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 work is beautiful. The work is beautiful. The work is amazing. But what's meaningful to me is knowing that someone reached deep into their memory reserve and came up with something that they wanted to put down on that canvas and speak to us and tell us what they were thinking. And it's just spectacular. Yeah. And a lot of that credit should go to those facilitators who work with them every week. Yeah, We have some wonderful facilitators who are just, they're lovely with these people and they really help them just to, you know, make it special and talk talk with them and work with them and encourage them 
and they do a wonderful job. Lisa and her staff train all those facilitators, and that program has gotten so much better over the last four or five years because of what Lisa and her staff and then consequently what all those facilita- facilitators are doing every week I with c- our artists. I couldn't agree more. And so, Lisa, uh, help me out. Say the, the date again and where the auction will be held. The date is Saturday, June 8th. And the uh, venue is the Pat Boland Fieldhouse at the UC Health Training Center. So Excellent. that's the Broncos training Excellent. Facility. Okay. Yeah. Is there a cost to get in? Is there? Yes. There is. There's. We do have sponsorships. We still have a few of those available. And it's $200 a person to attend. And that ticket gets you in the door for cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. And we do serve dinner. A lovely time of, uh, it's a different event. It's not like a typical gala where you walk in and sit down and eat your dinner. There's a a great time of um, walking around and seeing the artwork that's displayed like an art gallery. And then time to visit with people and network and meet other people from care communities or other caregivers and families. And then we do sit down for a program and the live auction. Okay. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So you mentioned that it's at the um, Denver Broncos training camp. How did the Broncos get involved in this? Well, as you probably know, the Denver Broncos owner, Pat Bolin, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's many years ago now. Yes. And after that announcement became public, the Broncos teamed up with the Alzheimer's Association, and we are now a community partner with them. Mm -hmm. And so they offered to host the event. When the field house opened about four years ago, we were one of the first nonprofits to be in there for an event. So they're very generous to us. They opened their doors there, and we turned that field house into a kind of mini art gallery and event space. It's <laughs> amazing sure. what we can do. With I'm it. not sure how many it is. Because <laughs> it's, an, it's an indoor football field, right? It's amazing. Yeah. But they've been a wonderful partner to us and support in this, uh, you know, in the fight to find a cure for this disease. Oh, absolutely. And our heart goes out to that family. They've been very generous and very open about their journey Yes, with with uh, Mr. B's disease and his life. And I think really what this program tries to do in my mind is uh, create great quality of life for these folks uh, so that they can have fun in their life and enjoy it. And it also maintains their dignity. It makes them feel like a million dollars when they are creating something really beautiful that is just really coming from within. And it's a fabulous event. Your website, how they purchase tickets, phone number. Right. So we, you can go to our website, which is alz.org. Dot, no, I'm going to give you the call right. <laughs> alz.org backslash Colorado. And it's right on the front page there. You can click to buy tickets. You can also call our office at 303-813-1669. Extension 217 will take you right to where you need to go to buy those tickets. Nancy, will you say that one more time with the phone number? Phone number is 303-813-1669, extension 217. Okay. And so is this event usually sold out? It will be sold out fairly soon. How many people can fit in that field house? Well, we are limited in space there. We we generally have an audience of about 700 guests. Okay. And we're getting close to that, but we do still have some space for individual tickets. You can also purchase a table of 10 for $2,000. Excellent. Well, ladies, thank you for being here today. I can't wait to attend the auction. We can't gonna, wait to see you there. It's going to be fabulous. Next week, I'm having Randy Kukendall on the show from the state of Colorado, and we're going to talk about the new regulations that have just come out for the assisted living communities. I think it's really important. I love this program. I testified on behalf of the state, and I'm really looking forward to having uh, Randy on the show. Ladies, thank you, and we'll see you next week on Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. You've been listening to Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. Visit her website 
website at summitresiliencetraining.com to learn more and join us next week as we learn more about dementia, Alzheimer's, and overcoming obstacles with a positive outcome. See you next time. 